Alright, so it's been a while since I made a little video of the bug, so I figured I'd uh, do something. We're uh, not going to do anything with the turbo. That setup's yeah, it's starting to work. Got some more stuff to figure out with it. But what we're going to do tonight is we are going to play with our front end. Um, I do know if I go a little too low, I'm going to rub my tires. But if you can see, it is uh, kind of lopsided. It's a little lower in the back than it is in the front, and I can't handle that. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the front end tonight. And for the people out there not familiar with Volkswagens, the front end is stock, not adjustable. It's just where it is. Um, now what you do to adjust it is you can go to a couple of routes. You can buy drop spindles and that will move the center line of your axle down. I don't know if you can see in here, but it would move it from the center upwards towards that top torsion bar, typically about there, which would be about two and a half inches. But on a link pin bug like this, you'd have to rebuild your complete um, kingpin link pin assemblies and all that. Good thing is, this is an aftermarket beam, and it has the adjusters in it. And this one's got the Ava style, um, Puma style, whichever you kind of want to prefer to call them. But it's got adjusters in it already. And as you can see, it's about, the bottom one's about all the way up. And I think the top one was completely up. So I can go a little room there. But what I do have to worry about is I have the stubber still. So I can't go completely slam it on the ground, which I don't want to anyway because I know the tires will rub. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm probably going to move the bottom one at least to halfway down and probably the top one to about where the bottom tube adjuster is. But it's a simple procedure. I'm going to jack up the car. That thing has two jam nuts on it. I don't know if you can see with my light here, but it has two jam nuts and it has a grub screw that goes through and hooks to the torsion bars that are inside there and then those plates are serrated so when it's all locked down the center of the torsion bar is held in one place and let me see if I can do it so you have it held there and then the torsion bar comes out to here and here's another grub screw it hooks to the trailing arm and when you move the car up and down or go over a bump it will twist the torsion bar which is a big pack of metal springs so I'll move it up and down so you can see that So as you can see, it moves the torsion bars, moves the uh, trailing arms there. So without being able to cut that off, which I don't want to do because I don't want to go that low, I got probably another inch of clearance. It will probably ride on that, but I kind of don't care. It's just kind of more for looks, which will translate into a lot because there's leverage here on the arm because it kicks back. But that's what we're going to do tonight. And... Here. Probably show you a little bit of the uh, turbo setup here and show you what's been going on with that. I do have no deck lid spring now, so I got to use my handy dandy screwdriver to hold it up. Reminds me when I was a teenager, I had to do the same thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. But in here, I got that piping made up. My uh, welder had kind of decided to die. The uh, rheostat for the voltage adjustment died out and it got stuck full wide open. So I was blowing holes through everything and making gnarly welds. So I'm sure there's some leakage. But it comes from the turbo up to my worthless blow off valve from China and then up around the display distributor up to my T and then goes to the uh, plenums. Now this one for some reason after I got everything welded up I welded it on a different carburetor I had a spare one and I just uh, made these plates those are the bottoms of the Cadron air cleaner and then that's the top and then that's a three inch tube in between. Um, I don't know why but it's 
probably something to do with the heat or whatever but um once I got it all welded up and put it on this carburetor which I say like I said is a different carburetor it did not fit straight and I don't know if you can tell but it's not level the inside there would bottom out the outside had about an eighth inch gap and I don't know exactly why maybe the rod was bent on the one I used or this one's not straight I don't know but what I came up with a fix for that was I was going to use an o-ring at first but I couldn't find anything that would fit so like the rest of the car it's kind of getting hokey but I kind of just don't care I went down to Lowe's you know a big box store and looked around for anything that was rubber and about two and five eighths inch diameter and what I came up with is that what you see right there now if you notice it's smaller on one side and fatter on another and I'll show you exactly what that is oh, put the deck lid down so we can get across oh, that's gonna be a pain but I'll show you here and I don't know why it must be something with Volkswagens Volkswagen guys we're always cluttery I don't know why I've cleaned this garage up a couple of times and then it looks like this but right there overflow washer it's thicker on one side thinner on the other and what it is is in your tub I don't know if you can see that picture or not but the little overflow drain for your tub so you don't overflow your whole house and this is what it is this is the washer it goes back behind there and hooks to the drain because the tubs usually have a curb to them and it was like a dollar 99 or something like that but it's rubber it's rubber and squished on there pretty good and that got me from I think before it had such a bad leak I was having like one pound of boost to now it's up to five so I want to do the same thing on the other side just because I was using the uh, cork gasket on the other side of the uh, carb hat but you know who knows gasoline will probably eat it away and it probably won't be here a week from now but I'll figure it out but you know if you have some dilemma you run into you know think outside the box so we're going to grab the jack and we're going to jack up the car and start taking this thing and try and get it lower to the ground but first I will probably take a picture of where we're at height wise and then we'll have a picture later on for once we do get it lower and you know like I say I don't know if it shows up very well but it's got a little rake to the back and I don't like that so we're going to try and fix that. Alright, life lesson. When you figure out how to use something, don't reset it. I set the camera to photo burst and I can't figure out how in the world to get it off, so I'll take a video. Okay, so roughly, if I line it up with the center line of the wheel going straight up, it is roughly 26 and a quarter. We'll call it that. So, I'm hoping to drop it down probably... I don't know, maybe a good two inches here would be kind of nice to fill in some of that fender gap. I want to still have a little gap. Yeah, inch above the tire would be nice. So, we'll get to work.
gone forever. I believe so. I'll probably edit this out, but you guys are probably looking at it right now. Did I put it up here? No. There's the wrenches. Flashlight. Well, how do I lose it? There we go. All right. Really? Well, how about this? Old faithful. Where will we be without phones today? I don't know. You know, the funny thing is, it took me forever to get a cell phone, and now I wouldn't I can't go anywhere without one, actually. You know. But, as you can see, I still have a little bit of room before we hit the stopper. Not much. And I can cut that off if I need be. I can even cut it farther up and still keep it there but it would still stub on the uh, torsion arm but let's see how this looks from farther back I should have got a shot from uh, back here I don't know about you guys me that just looks like heaps a lot better so if you have an adjustable suspension in the front, that's what you look for. It's going to have um, the serrated plates, or it's going to have another grub screw coming up from the bottom, pushing on that center stud. Um, so there's two styles of adjusters. There's the, well, there's three in all reality, but nobody uses a selected drop anymore. I don't even know. I think you can still get it, but who would use it? And um, it's very archaic looking. It has a big piece of um, ball thread connecting both adjusters and, you know, makes the car, supposedly, I've never had one, but they say it makes it hard to, a hard ride, but so does this. So, anyway, I think the car looks a whole lot better now. It's got a little more street machine look to it. But um, you have two types of adjusters. You have the Avis adjusters or Puma, what most people call them. And then you have... Um, this way away, I think it's usually what everybody calls them, but it has your grub screw is right here, and then it has an adjuster that pushes up or down. You know, your torsion springs are always pushing down on it, so you can adjust it up and then you can adjust it down. So there will be two nuts you'll have to loosen here, and then two on this one to adjust the screw up or down. That's where the Avis just has plates that have serrated fittings, and you put the serrated fittings in different angles. And then, uh, of course, you have the uh, drop spindles, which, you know, if you're buying new brakes, you might as well go with that. The only problem on white fives is that they almost all of them push, if they're drop spindles, they push the wheel out and will make the car rub the tires. And that will happen even if you have a two inch narrow beam and you have the CB performance drop spindles, that will happen, and that's how I got these actual rims and tires. Is because my buddy John had the CB drop spindles with the Y5 disc brakes, and it rubbed, and it rubbed pretty good. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, there, there's a ring right here, 
where that tire was rubbing and it may rub on this you know once I get a little weight in there and go take a corner and this is a stock beam as far as I know I've never measured it but so if you're doing drop spindles you got to think about that um, you can go super old school I wouldn't recommend it but um, on a ball joint you uh, can pull some leaves out there are multiple shims in there for leaves and you can pull some out I've had bugs that did that and they rode horrible um, at least with the you know if I want to put a little more suspension back in this I can adjust it back once you pull leaves out you're you're just putting leaves back in you got to take the whole frame apart on a um, link pin the leaves are like seam welded together at the ends and what you do is you can cut a leaf or two out of the pack in the center in between the trailing arm and the grub screw. Once again, don't really recommend it. You know, um, most beams nowadays, you know, if, you, if your guy just wanting to bolt something in, buy a beam that has adjusters. You know, if you're a kid that's got no money, you know, I can understand cutting the leaves, but you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. If you're taking the whole beam apart, I think adjusters are like 15 bucks a pop you know so at least buy one adjuster you know I mean you're taking it apart you can have a shop welded in they'll probably do it for 20 bucks at a welding shop you know take them 15 minutes to do it especially if you cut it out and get it set up and mark it where you want it um, that's the next thing if you do put adjusters in it unless you're really planning on narrowing the beam you know don't super slam it you know because um, I've seen guys do that. They put the adjuster basically where the grub screw is usually kind of at an upward angle like this. They'll put that grub screw when it's adjusted all the way up like that, you know, and it, it never works out very well. You know, the thing's way too low and you can't drive it. Even with the adjusters all the way up, it's barely, you know, be conservative, you know, don't, don't put the grub screw pointing down to the ground. You're, you're not going to be able to drive the thing. That's where John's bug is at, and it's got drop spindles on top of that, and with it all the way up, it barely gets down the road. So, but figured I'd make a little video here, and I wanted to change the look of the car. So, if you have an adjustable beam, and you know you want your car to look a little, you know, even if it's all stock looking, you want it to look a little more aggressive. You know, go out there and lower it. It took like 15 minutes to do it. A little bit of dirt. But, you know, just road grind. And uh, I may have to adjust it back up a little bit once I drive it around. But you can see how easy it is. It's not, not rocket science. So, you know, hopefully everybody has a good time playing with their cars.